How to save more money for retirement in 2024. That's the topic of today. So the first question I want to ask is, why do you want to retire? Is it because you're working in a job that you don't love, because there's more things that you want to do and you just can't because work gets in the way? Is it because it's what everyone's always told you you should do? Like, I get it. In the industrial age, people work terrible, hard jobs. They're in assembly lines, the same mundane work every day. People working seven days a week in dangerous jobs and dying with the physical labor that they performed. Yet here we are in 2024, and it's still a goal. But I want to say, what if your objective wasn't retirement as much as economic independence? That place where you have enough recurring revenue to cover your basic expenses. And that comes from assets that create that cash flow. And now work is a choice. You have freedom from day to day of where you live and what you do without the pressure and strain of saying, I've got to make this money in order to pay the bills. And people often trade their time for money at the expense of the enjoyment of life. So I would just want to begin as we go through this Barron's article that I was reading. And my job is to help you discern truth from falsehood and see if I can help you be empowered with your financial decisions and not just take this formula that so many people have been indoctrinated with, that wealth is a function of how much money can you save, how much risk are you willing to take, how long are you willing to wait. That kind of dogma has really held people back. And ultimately, it, it, it's the opposite of what they really want because they're just setting money aside, setting money aside, budgeting, scrimping, saving. And then they wait till one day, someday when they're older to be like, okay, now I get to finally create cash flow. But they were never trained on how to create cash flow. So I think it's great to be able to save more money, especially if it doesn't constrain and restrict you or rob you of enjoyment along the way. But I want to begin with that premise of is retirement what you want or do you want more financial independence? Or are you looking for a sense and feeling of freedom? I know a lot of people get student loans. They get trapped in a job they don't love. There's pressure of performing and, and providing for a family when it comes to our money situation. So that's the first piece. But let's click forward and see what the next piece is here. It says, January is a good time to check in on your financial well-being and make sure you're on track for a comfortable retirement. Now, financial well-being and comfortable retirement are two different things. 95% of people that are age 65 don't have a so-called comfortable retirement because maybe they were counting on a pension that didn't do what it was supposed to. Or Social Security, even though it's the number they thought it was going to be, inflation has decimated that and doesn't go quite as far as they hoped. Or maybe their retirement funds didn't perform how they wanted because there were downturns in 2000 to 2002, 2008 to 2010, and 2020, and again here recently. And so maybe it just didn't perform how they wanted. So let's let's take a look at like financial well-being means you have enough cash flow to cover your expenses. That's economic independence or a peace of mind fund that you have six months set aside. So if you want to change a career or have a health issue or element or a family issue that you want to attend to, you're going to be okay there and that you have the right transferring of risk with your car insurance, homeowner's insurance, liability, disability, medical life, medical insurance and life insurance. Have you transferred risk properly so that you, you know, don't have a catastrophic event, confiscate your wealth? Do you have you know, the right tax structure to save on taxes and to be proactive and navigate that? Do you have protection on the downside of your investments? And do your investments create cash flow for you? And do you feel like you understand your investments and feel like they create the right peace of mind for you, including the return that they give, so it doesn't create and confiscate like that enjoyment of life because you're worried whether it's going to last or not? And is it the type of investments that make sense for who you are and where you're at right now? And do you actually have the right plan that's specific to you. So we can look at all these different components. Do you have trusts or wills? That's part of having good financial well-being, you know, to make sure that if you're not around, how do you want that to hap be handled and protecting from liability and do you have basic asset protection? So financial well-being, more than anything, is do you have that sense of clarity and peace of mind? Do you have that confidence in your financial direction? Comfortable retirement is something that might be down the road for many people, and that might be a completely different sentiment. And it, we might not know what comfortable looks like for us, because I know a luxury once enjoyed becomes a necessity. So that's a lot to unpack from one sentence, but let's take a look forward in this article. It says, keep paying yourself first, which I love that concept, pay yourself first. I agree with that. But let's look at what it says beneath. If you got a pay bump this year, Consider squirreling more of your paycheck away in your 401k. It's funny. I think of like misers very squirrely, like hold on to what they've got, you know, scrimp, save, sacrifice. And it's more about a reductionist, like cut expenses, budgetary thinking. So when it says save and pay yourself first, well, like you're not really paying yourself first if it goes into a 401k. 
This is saying you can go from 23, you know, to 23,000 from 22,500 and your IRA contribution or your 401k in the IRA is at 7,000 instead of 6,500. Great, you can put more money in, but what's that doing for you? Is it creating cash flow? Have you paid off inefficient loans? Have you maximized your tax savings? Have you transferred your risk? Like, is that really the very best thing? A lot of these plans are lazy assets. They don't create cash flow along the way. And therefore, just putting more money in there, I wouldn't call that paying yourself first. That's not a savings mechanism. It's an investment vehicle. So pay yourself first to create automation to capture some money and build that peace of mind fund of six months. And then when you look to invest, discover your investor DNA. Where are you investing to create cash flow? Where can you invest where you have a level of expertise or knowledge or interest? Where do you have that competency or what drives you to learn about that? And start to focus on how you can create cash flow versus just accumulate. All right, the next piece, it says, take advantage of the new student loan match. I kind of like this. So for 2024, employers can choose to make workers student loan repayments eligible for the company's 401k match. That's great because that's a guaranteed savings if you have a 7% or 8% student loan you're getting matched on versus a non-guaranteed return of a 401k. And if you pay off that student loan, it can actually improve your cash flow. So it's important to understand your cost of money. What can you earn versus what you pay? That's our cost of money. We always pay interest. Whether we pay cash and forfeit the right to earn it, that's a little bit less known, or whether we borrow and pay interest to the institution. So in this situation, you borrowed and paid interest to the institution, and this is a loan that there are some programs that could be forgiven over a long period of time, but most of the time, student loans can't bankrupt out of them. You know, the, the interest rates have gone up substantially. So if you could only earn 4 or 5%, but you're paying 7 or 8%, the best thing might be, rather than put your money into a plan that's volatile and variable and not creating cash flow, is pay this off and free up that cash flow. Again, it depends on your cost of money. What can you earn ver versus what you could pay? But when you pay it off, that's a guaranteed savings, where a lot of times when you invest, that's a non-guaranteed earning. All right, let's go to the next one here. Consider a Roth rollover before tax breaks expire. So at the end of 2025, you know, we could start looking at going from 37% on the top rate to 39.5%. So you actually have a, an opportunity where you could take a, a traditional IRA that is pre-tax, that has to be taxed on the, on the amount that's, you know, coming out, and you can convert that to a Roth. And here's where that may make sense for people. Number one, are you going to be making more money in the future? I know some financial people say, oh, you can live off 70% of your pre-retirement income. But the question is, do you want to? Maybe people plan for that, and then we've seen about 30% of the value of the dollar go away in the last three years due to inflation. So, you know, to be in a lower tax bracket, you either have to have more tax deductions, and people in retirement typically don't if they sold businesses or their kids are, you know, over a certain age or, or you know, they're not able to write off some of the things they wrote off in the past. So, less tax deductions, the government would have to lower tax rates. And this is like showing their tax rates are likely to go up, and now they might even change between now and then through legislation and new, you know, new tax laws. But the reality is we're like $34 trillion in debt in the United States. So how are they going to collect on that? Well, they can either add to the balance sheet or print money, or they can raise taxes. And so if they raise taxes and you're deferring those taxes. It might be a higher tax rate when you go to access that money. If A, you're making more money, B, the government raises the tax rate. So take those things into consideration. This is actually a, a potential consideration, especially if you know, this year, maybe you are not going to make as much money as other years because of a number of restructuring factors or you've made changes. So, or maybe you just create a tax strategy, watch some of my other videos and help create some offset when you make this conversion. So you pay the taxes today, but some of that offset helps you out. Or again, you know, it might save you a couple percent depending on which tax rate you're in. So that's not a bad piece of advice. Always automate. I do like automation when it comes to savings. I don't like automation when it comes to investing. Automate your savings, be deliberate with your investing. This says it may not be possible to set aside a huge chunk of your earnings, so start small and set up automatic transfers from your paycheck to your bank account. I love that. Set up a separate account. It could be a checking money market savings account and just automatically start putting some money into that account. And then what I would say is not just put it into retirement accounts, which is really what it's talking about, but like just automate the savings for your peace of mind fund. And then when there's enough cash in there, you can start choosing to allocate towards investments. But part of the way to get there is find a way to be more efficient. Could you save on tax? Could you restructure, renegotiate interest rates on your loans? Could you find where there's hidden fees or commissions or, or account fees that you could eliminate so that your performance of your investments would get better? 
Or could you find ways to restructure insurances so you don't have duplicate coverages or costs? Now, I have videos just on how to be more efficient with your money that's worth diving into here. And even, you know, just look in the show notes, you're going to see there's a quick tips guide, eight tips on how you can put more money in your pocket in the next 30 days. So that could be really great to help find that money to help you automate. So it's not just about budgeting and constraining. So decent advice here they gave. All right. So those are the main ways it's saying to go about handling, saving more for 2024. I've given some additional insight, maybe different perspective because their box is all, you're doing this just for retirement instead of quality of life along the way, instead of maybe investing back into yourself, instead of maybe creating cash flow today rather than way into the future in retirement years. Hey, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And if you're enjoying these videos, well, there's good news. More where that came from. So go ahead and click through and watch the next video now.